Good afternoon. On behalf of the ACCJ, I'm very honored to welcome all of you to the inaugural ACCJ Kansai Women in Business Summit. I'm very sorry that I'm not able to greet you in person. We commend Prime Minister Shinzo Abe for including womenomics in his growth strategy for Japan and for urging all private and public sector entities to have women in 30% of all management and leadership positions by 2020. This has resulted in widespread awareness of just how underrepresented women are in these positions and acceptance of womenomics as a core component of fostering sustained economic growth in Japan. One no longer has to convince others of the benefits to be gained in Japan through womenomics. Public opinion polls indicate that public support for empowering Japanese women in the workplace is rising. It has been encouraging to hear about private and public sector entities adopting initiatives in the hopes of reaching 30% by 2020, and to see increased visibility of accomplished Japanese women as role models and of Japanese career women in Japanese advertising, television programming, and other media. There have been many steps in the right direction. For example, the number of openings at childcare facilities has increased and is expected to continue to increase until the end of fiscal 20, 2017. In June, the Japanese government announced a draft economic strategy focused on, among other things, increasing employee productivity, which when coupled with womenomics, should provide Japanese women returning to the workforce with on-the-job training help create more engaging work opportunities for Japanese women and help create better life-work balance for Japanese women and men. And just last Friday, the Japanese Diet enacted a new law that goes into effect next April, obliging companies with more than 300 employees, along with central and local governments, to set and publicly disclose numerical targets for the employment and promotion of women and action plans for realizing these targets. That said, there's still a lot of ground to cover over the next four and a half years. For example, in its 2014 gender gap analysis, the World Economic Forum ranked Japan 104 out of 142 countries based on an analysis of the gaps between men and women in the areas of economic participation and opportunity, educational attainment, health and survival, and political empowerment. This is particularly striking when you consider the percentage of Japanese women completing higher education exceeds that of most other developed nations. Many are still asking fundamental questions. How do we get there? How do we convert these strategies into measurable results? With panel discussions on women in leadership, male champions of change, and HR best practices, we hope this summit will answer these questions by identifying the challenges that still need to be addressed here in Kansai, by sharing tested best practices on how to advance the role and engagement of women in the workplace, and by focusing on driving business through diversity as a key means of stimulating further economic growth in Kansai and throughout Japan. To ensure that real measurable changes continue to be made, an action-oriented momentum has to be maintained beyond today's summit through further collaboration between the government, including at the prefectural and local levels, and private sector companies with the cooperation of female professionals, their families, their work superiors and subordinates, and HR and other talent management professionals. Throughout today's summit, please think of the roles you can play and the actions you will take as individuals, as companies, and as local governments to help convert these core strategies into measurable results so that women, men, and the Kansai region can prosper and shine. Thank you very much to all of those who helped organize today's summit and to all of you for attending. I look forward to seeing many of you at next month's Kansai Walkathon.
Thank you very much.